Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. So it's been a little while since we continued on with our VGC Series 9 content. Obviously last week there wasn't really much content on the channel and that was really down to me using all the spare time I had to kind of prepare for the region the region qualifiers for players cup four which happened this past weekend and that brings us on to today's team because this is the team that i ran in those qualifiers and unfortunately it didn't go as well as i kind of hoped it would uh, i put a lot of work into the team i i thought and believed that the team would do well i uh, got off to a really good start went 2-0 and then things slowly went downhill from there uh playing very good opponents uh some tough matchups and then a little bit rng that didn't go our way um, just meant that I ended up going 2-3 and then that led to the drop because at that point I couldn't really qualify so um, I just spent the rest of the day being very sad and more myself than anything else you know I felt like it was just I put a lot of work in and uh, it just didn't work out and sometimes that happens and I, I think in those situations it's it's when you can kind of pick yourself back up again, dust yourself off and say, right, well, what have we learned from that? And then kind of try and move forward and, and improve uh, for the next time. Uh, and that's what we've got to keep doing. Keep going. Don't get disheartened. Uh, it's obviously hard not to at the time because I, I still am feeling a little bit stung by it. But you've got to just kind of just crack on and try and improve and see where you went wrong. And um, one of the things that I was thinking about today was, do I bring this team to the channel? And uh, I'm still proud of the team and I still think the build's really good. Um, and for that reason, this is why I'm gonna feature it today. So hopefully you do enjoy it. It's got some different uh, builds uh, to it. They're all the all the spreads and things are down in the description with the poker paste. Uh, here's the rental and we'll obviously have a couple of games of the team as we normally do and then we'll finish up with it. So hopefully, we can uh, talk about the team in the games today and uh, get some get some W's because that's what it's all about. So, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. It's nice to be back with Series 9. Keep the rental teams coming. We've got some cool teams lined up for this week and other content as well. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, without further ado, we'll jump into our first match of today. Okay, first up today, we have a Tarakian Dragapult, a Naya Liga, Rotom Heat, a Reggie Alecki, and a Rillaboom. So we've got definitely like beat up combination in here with the Dragapult Tarakian. Uh, we've got quite a fast kind of pacey team that doesn't really uh, do well in Trick Room. Unfortunately, we don't have Trick Room to kind of support us, but we don't need that. So let's see what we can do. Um, obviously, got to watch out for the Reggie Alecki and the Naya Liga. Um, because they can cause all sorts of issues to our team. The Rotom Wash would be great here, but then the, the Rillaboom isn't something that we want to be kind of relying on too much. Uh, I think Spectria could be quite good with Grimmsnarl here um, as a lead. The only issue would be obviously the beat up combination, which makes things a little bit more tricky. So it makes me want to change my mind slightly on what we're going to lead. Um... Whereas if we go maybe something like, because uh, our rock weakness isn't brilliant here. I mean, Grimmsnarl, Togekiss. Oh, actually, actually, we're there. We're there, we're there, we're there. We've got to be quick. Landorus, Togekiss, Grimmsnarl, and Spectre. Let's go with that. Let's leave the Rotom off the cards, because Rotom's good here, but then the Rillaboom just completely makes that a very more it makes it a lot more complicated a lot more clunky of a match because then we're always constantly thinking if they brought the rillaboom we've got to get rid of the rillaboom before we get the rotom on the field so it's given my opponent a lot of room throughout that match so i want to just take that out of the equation i don't think we necessarily need it um yeah so there's the beat up uh, option there which makes things not ideal but at the same time do they go for the beat up here the one problem that I always have is, do we go follow me or do we bluff the follow me to say, oh, we don't need the follow me, we can just go max airstream and then start earthquaking, um, which is definitely an option. But the problem is if they just beat up straight off the bat and we don't follow me, uh, then we're in a lot of trouble. Whereas we could go max airstream into the Dragapult, follow me, we get around that beat up equation, we probably lose Togekiss in the process. And the tracking is going to max. Yep. But the speed boost that we get here with the Landorus puts us in a great position. It means that we're going to be able to get rid of that Dragapult the next turn. And 
for the cost of Togekiss, it's not too bad. And that's what one of the reasons, you know, we we run quite an offensive Togekiss in this team, right? Because we've got the Crit Kiss. I think it's very good in certain matchups in this in this this format. But at the same time, it is there to kind of support situations like this to give us kind of that out when we need it. Um, now, it's interesting, Landorus was one of those Pokemon that you didn't generally bring too much in Players Cup. And maybe that's where I went a little bit wrong, a little bit astray. Um, in some of my matches where I should have maybe relied on it a bit more because it is such a good Pokemon. There's the beat up there. They were going for it. So, I mean, that's the thing. If you like, if you kind of try and get a bit cheeky and say, well, I'm going to call your bluff because you're not going to go for it because we've got Follow Me and you feel like you're wasting a turn. You know, it's better just going for it straight off the bat. Uh, there's the rock fall. It will take Togekiss down, unfortunately. Put the sand up, though. But the residual damage with the airstream damage, it will get into the Dragapult. And then the lander has been out able to outspeed the Dragapult. Will put us in a great position going into this next turn. And then it also means that we can get Spectre onto the field if we want. And potentially go for a Will-O-Wisp uh, into the Terrakian. Shut it down even more. Um... We'll go for another Airstream if we want and put Spectra kind of out of reach of something like the, the Regia Leki that potentially is lying in wait in the back. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think what we do is Airstream, Dragapult again, and we go for that Will-O-Wisp. Because the Terrakian's already minus one. Now the issue would be the Dragapult is scarfed. Is the Dragapult scarfed? Is it scarfed? Well, if it's scarfed, we lose, right? I don't think it's scarfed. No, we get the Airstream off, so we get rid of that beat up option there. And that's the big thing, what you want to try and do in these matchups. And you can see the utility there of Togekiss here, just being a, able to allow us to kind of do that. The will o -Wisp landing here would be nice. Uh, Terrakian could have something like Lumberry though, which would, uh, would complicate things a little bit. The will o -Wisp does hit, which is great, get the burn. No berry, just a steel spike coming out, which is not the worst thing in the world into the Spectre, which we can take pretty well. Um, and then, yeah, Lander has kind of set us up in this game to, to be able to kind of close this one out. The track is really useless now, especially without that beat up option. Uh, from my opponent's side of the field, Lander is in a great spot where it's just able to kind of outspeed everything now, especially even if the Reggie Alecki comes in, we're going to be able to get... Um, be able to outspeed that and then the rot of coming in does mean that we're kind of locked into going for i mean we don't even i mean we just double in on the rot it, it may protect here it may protect but i mean i don't really worry too much about the track in at this stage it's kind of forced to potentially go for steel spike to give that rot a little bit more defense so it can take these these max rock falls a little bit better or rock slides but we're not even going to see that so this should put it in range of a shadow ball now and allow ooh, yeah 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 just able to take that and no berry there so we'll get the the uh the grim near boost as well on top of that which sets us up perfectly for this end game against potentially a reggie Alecki, which i don't know is it going to be the Alecki or is it not going to be it could be the boom Rillaboom could come out. Uh, the Steel Spike coming out into Landorus this time, but doing. Yeah, it's just like whiff, whiffy damage. So. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the last last Pokemon is. Obviously, Rillaboom causes a few issues, of course, with the, the Grassy Glide. Uh, it may, may depend on the item choice that it's got, be able to get the Spectre, but it is the Nihiligo, so. I mean, that's, that's as good as it's going to get for us, really, isn't it? Um, well, we can just earthquake, really. Yeah, I mean that's all we do. We just earthquake. I mean, Spectre are going to be able to. Hope, yeah, Spectre should take an earthquake, and we'll just go for a Shadow Ball as well. I think, yeah, I mean Spectre should take the earthquake. Should, should, should. We are plus one with Spectre as well, so earthquake probably not take down the Terrakian but it will definitely take out this Nihiligo. The worst case scenario here is if they protect the Nihiligo but then again like you know they're not going to be able to get around it the, the following turn uh, and if they go for something like uh, Trick Room there there's a weakness policy but unfortunately because the Spectre is outspeeding the Terrakian 
um, even without the airstream, we'd be we'd be in a good spot. So we pick a pretty clean win here, uh, first game against. I guess. Oh wow! It actually takes it. Takes that. Wow, that's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Let you take that. So that's a that's a bulky, bulky old track in. But the burn going to be enough to take it down. And Lander has pretty much single-handedly won this game. And this is the thing, like I said at the start of this match, didn't bring Landerus much in the Players' Cup. And maybe that's the reason why. But a lot of those matches where I, I didn't bring it, they didn't feel very favourable. But uh, good game to our opponent. Good way for us to kick off with today. A nice quick one. And we'll get straight into our next game. Okay, next up we have... Ooh, this looks tasty. A Ludicolo, Pelipper, a Raichu, Seismitoad, Ferrothorn, and Gudra. Looks tasty, but it looks a little bit awkward to play against as well. Obviously, a very rain-centered team around the Pelipper with that rain dance supporting Ludicolo and the Seismitoad with that swift swim there. And then you've got a kind of classic kind of backup Pokemon in the Gudra uh, with the... Um, it's most likely going to be Sap Sipper and then the Ferrothorn on for the the trick room check <sighs> i don't like it i don't like it one little bit it makes it difficult to run the rotom here i mean grim snarl gonna be great i think grim snarl uh togekiss very good i do want to bring marowak just because well do i want to bring marowak marowak's great in an end game situation against something like ferrothorn for sure but it's so many threats to marowak otherwise we need the like the rain up really uh, I mean, not the rain. We need we need to get rid of the rain. That's what we need. Uh, I will bring Marowak because I think a perish in a late game against something like um, the Gudra, the Ferrothorn, would be good. We can kind of manage the rest of the team. Hopefully with Togekiss, Grimmsnarl, it feels like it could be uh, solid enough to do that. And then maybe, maybe we want a good switch in to something like Rotom, which can... Oh, which, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, let's go with Rotom. Rotom's not the best, but it gives us a switch in to the big powerful water type attack so that can potentially come out and give something like Marowak a lot of issues, you know what I mean? Um, now, I think we either see Pelipper Ludi lead or we'll see Raichu and maybe something like Seismitoad. Pelipaludi. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So light screen gonna be so important for us here. And then obviously the uh max air streams are gonna be the big, big, big key for us in this one. Where we can deal with the Ludi. Uh the light screen gonna be enough for us to uh, to just pull that trigger straight away. And then I think we just need to um to just dive in with the max, go after the Ludi as quick as possible. Get ourselves a plus two, which should put us above everything in the speed bracket with that swift swim, like the Ludi and the Seismitoad. They're not the fastest of Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure that Togekiss, well, I'm pretty confident Togekiss be, at, be able to outspeed them if we get ourselves a plus two. So that's the, the main aim of the game here. Um, obviously, Pelipper does get Tailwind, so we need to watch out for that, which makes things a little bit more complicated. But we'll see what the Pelipper goes for. Maybe my opponent just wants to go on the offensive. Turn one and just start chucking out damage. I would be surprised if we don't see um, the Ludi max here. I think the Ludi will max. If it doesn't, fakes out. <sighs> no max, no max, no max. So we're going to be able to potentially get rid of this Ludi straight away, you know? Hydro Pump coming out from the pineapple. Into Scrimsnarl. Okay. Take that pretty well. Togekiss gets away unscathed and we get that big airstream into the Ludi, which is super 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 helpful critical hit as well don't think it mattered especially because it's not maxed um all right i don't know what's going on with my hair today scald coming out all right doubling up into the grim snow wants to get rid of it um no burn as well which is nice and we can kind of mitigate the burn as well if we want um I think Seismitoad hits the field now. Max Ooze is a bit of an issue for us. Oh, it's Ferrothorn. Huh. Do we just get rid of the Pelipper? Because you don't really care about the Ferrothorn. Even if it's like Iron Defense, we do not care about it. If they've got Ferrothorn, I think we just go after the Pelipper. Because Max Airstream now into it. Yeah, the Ferrothorn we don't care about. Like, as long as you get rid of the water threats, then Marowak just absolutely demolishes the rest of this team. We're going to see Max, Max Pelipper. Come on, let's see it. I reckon it's going to be Max Max Ferrothorn though, isn't it? Max Steel Spike. 
Yeah, there we are. There he is. There he is. Boosh. I wonder what set it is. It's probably more of a conventional set with like Power Whip, Gyro Ball, Leech Seed, and your Body Press variant, maybe. But again, it doesn't really matter what variant it is. Marowak does pretty well against most of them. You know? Especially with the Perish. And like, we've kind of cut this their options down pretty good so far. It just depends on the last Pokemon. Like, what is the last Pokemon they've got? You know? Spirit Break going to be able to get the Sash on the Pelipper. I do wonder if this is like, if this is that rental team. Is it the rental team? Someone got it to Master Rank? Maybe. Whew, that does fat damage, doesn't it? Especially because we haven't got the Reflect up, you know? Okay, well, let's see. Let's see what our options are this last turn. Not the last turn, but you know, the last Pokemon. You know what I mean? Seismitoad coming in. We should still be faster than it. Um, it can't max. Let's Spirit Break and Airstream. Yeah, it does make it a little bit more tricky dealing with the... Uh, if we can't get rid of the Seismitoad here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Not the end of the world. Reflect would have been better. The Protect, not ideal. Not ideal, especially for that Marowak. Hmm, because the Steel Spike, yeah, I think you're going to get rid of the Togekiss. Yeah, you definitely get rid of the Togekiss. Oh no. Oh, that's a little bit of an error, I think. I think a little bit of an error. I think you get rid of the Togekiss, because the Togekiss can definitely cause a few issues. Uh, we've got redirection where we can help the Marowak get the Perish up if we want this next turn. Um, we also got the Rotom here. Where we can go uh, Hydro Pump. It is a little bit risky. But I think we just double. I think we just double. We just Hydro Pump and Dazzle into the Seismitoad. Getting a little complacent in that last turn, really. Should have read the Protect a little bit better than what we did. But, I mean, the Seismitoad is not going to be... I mean, we could go Air Slash. Just a chance that Air Slash misses, just for the flinch. It's kind of nice. Uh, but Dazzle's more consistent here, which is probably the button that we should be clicking. But the flinch chance is always nice. And we do hit. This is a good toga kiss. This is a good toga kiss. If you get the flinch, it does flinch as well. So we get a little bit fortunate there. The hydro pump does hit. Had a few hydro pump misses as well in players cup four, uh, but that's going to happen. You know, it's not the most accurate of attack. So you are going to get a few occasions where it doesn't connect, and uh, the max overgrowth going to get rid of the rotom. But it's all. Oh, it's not fine actually. It's not fine at all because we can't perish against the uh, we can't perish against the Ferrothorn because it's slower than us. So we got to just rely. Yeah, the max. Yeah, this makes it a little bit more complicated. Bit more complicated. Yeah, because it's slower than us. So if we perish and we've only got two Pokemon left, we'll go down before it goes down. So it wins on the perish. So we cannot be clicking that button. We need to stall out the rain. See how many turns we've got left. One turn left. We double protect here. And then we go after the Ferrothorn. With a Fire Punch. And an Air Slash. And I think that should even like plus two defense that the Ferrothorn's on. It should still be enough to get it. So especially without the rain. And the reason why I went for Fire Punch over Flare Blitz was I didn't like the recoil damage that we got with with uh, Flare Blitz. And Marowak in this team is never meant to be like a huge powerhouse, you know. It does respectable enough damage with the Fire Punch, you just miss out on the recoil, which is kind of important, especially for the longevity of it. If you want to keep it on the field for a long amount of time, you've got to make sure that um, you're not taking too much damage when unnecessary, but we do pick up the win there. Uh, it would have been interesting to see how much the Fire Punch did do, but I think we would have clinched it anyway. But uh, good game to my opponent. Uh, we do pick up the 
victory and um, we'll move on have one more game of the team hopefully face something a bit more standard in our last game of today's episode okay next up today we have a whimsicott moltres a mama swine cinderace a nyliga and spectra team oh this looks spicy and i mean you've got options here pretty much the whimsicott supporting everything below it with that tailwind support to make them very threatening very quickly um obviously the mama swine cannot be intimidated makes it difficult there the nyliga gives us a lot of trouble as well especially with things like Togekiss that we might want to bring against the Moltres that does so well. Um, Liner is going to be good here. Has to watch out for things like uh, Will-O-Wisp from uh, potential Spectre and the Mama Swine causes all sorts of issues. I think honestly like early on in this game, like we've got a couple of options. We could go Grimmsnarl Spectre and that could definitely work out for us um, against a bunch of things that my opponent could throw at us. Um, I'm kind of tempted to do it in all honesty. I am actually going to do it. I am going to do it. I want to try and show you this combination, which is a very centered point of the team. Uh, I think we need Landorus. It helps us out against the Nihiligo. Uh The Intimidate's useful against the Cinderace, even if it has got that white herb. And I think for an end game situation, probably more useful than anything. Well, a Rotom, there's arguments for why that could be good but Togekiss as well. I think we will go Rotom. It just matches up against the the, uh, the Mama Swine a little bit better. That gives us so many issues. Okay, let's go for it. The Nine Liga is a little bit of a problem, but it's not so much of a problem if you can kind of get that ball rolling with the Spectre of the Grim Snarl. So let's see what my opponent goes for. I'd expect the Moltres to come out. And if it's Moltres, Whimsicott, I don't mind this too much. And that might sound a bit crazy, but we do have ways around it. Okay, it's the Mama Swine and the Whimsicott. Okay, still not too bad. Still not too bad. They're going to Tailwind. And they're going to go Max, Max Quake, I think. We're going to Reflect. And we're going to go Will-O-Wisp into the Mamo. It could have, it could have Lumberry, I guess, but it's more likely to be Sash. Like, Sash Mamos, like, I think it's the most common item on it than Life Orb after that, then Assault Vest. So, Lumberry not likely here. Okay, we're just going to see a Protect from the Mamo. They're going to get their Tailwind up, gives us a turn to, um, to get the Reflect up, which is helpful. The other th issue here is the next turn could be a little bit problematic for us because we could see a taunt from the Whimsicott into Spectre to stop that Will-O-Wisp. So that's definitely an issue because if you look at my opponent's team, let's take a look. They're very weak to, to Trick Room, okay? Very weak to Trick Room, especially P2 Trick Room. It can get it up pretty quickly. So the things that you're going to look at, probably putting Taunt on are probably things like Spectre, things like Whimsicott. So you can kind of expect that here. Um, now we've got a couple of options where we could potentially just go after the Whimsicott here. Max with Spectria. And go Max Strike and just start lowering the speed of that Mama Swine. We don't necessarily need to worry about Mama Swine too much because we've got the Rotom in the back. Um, but we need to, I think, Max at this point to reduce the damage from that mammal that it's going to come out with the max quakes obviously we cannot um intimidate it because of the uh, the obvious obli oblivious or obvious whatever it is ability that it gets access to um because of the buff there and immune to intimidate but we are going to be able to drop its speed, which does make it a little bit more useful, especially once this Tailwind runs out for my opponent. But it's all about getting rid of the Whimsicott in the process, you know. And I think if our thinking's right, it's going to be tied up here going for a Taunt into Spectre to stop that Will-O-Wisp this turn, I would imagine. Ooh, no, we could have just went for the Wisp. The Helping Hand coming out. Not ideal. Max Hailstorm. Going to do a fat chunk of damage, especially with that Helping Hand boost, but not... Not a great deal. Not a great deal. I mean, it does a nice amount of damage. Not as much as I probably what my opponent expected it to do. We probably didn't need to double up into the Wimmy, but we probably do as well at the same time. Uh, the Spirit Break will be able to just, just do enough to take it down. And if not, the residual from the hail will be, be enough. The problem is the next turn, what does my opponent bring in? Ooh, ooh, a Jack Button. Okay, Jack Button Wimmy. Huh. 
switcheroo. I hate the switcheroo combination. I mean, no one likes the eject button with me. Especially when they eject it onto you, like I shot. Spirit Break not going to do a great deal into the, um, the Cinderace, but it'll do it a respectable amount of damage. Um, and without the helping hand on that Mama Swine, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, what's our play? What's our play now? We've got the Reflect up. We could go Max Phantasm and Spirit Break. We go Max God. Mm. I worry about Sucker Punch on the Cinderace for sure. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in Landorus just to kind of in case that Sucker Punch is there, in case it is there. Do we remove the sucker punch option? Yes, yes, we do. We do. We remove the Cinderace. We reduce the attack, uh, the defense on that Mammoth Swine as well at the same time. Uh, and of course, the Intimidate not going to affect the Mammoth Swine, right? Because of Oblivious. But it will reduce the damage output on a potential sucker punch from the Cinderace, which. Okay, it's not. It's Iron Head. That's. that's that's fine as well. So Grimmsnarl, I guess, gets to stick around a little bit later on. Max Quick coming out. Oh, oh, beautiful switch. That's what we like to see. I mean, even Rotom would have been a good switch in there. We don't manage to take down the Cinderace, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. But at the same time, we are reducing that uh, the damage on that Mamo now, potentially. Whatever comes in, Whimsicott or Cinderace on that slot there. We need to preserve the Lando for later on in this game. I think we bring... Uh, it's probably a good time to bring in something like Rotom here. Um, and we just go for that. We just go for the Max Phantasm. Because we'll be able to... Like if, if Whimsicott decides it wants to switch in here, you want to preserve the, the Cinderace for later on, we'll be able to remove that from the field. We'll remove. It's all about getting this Grim Nair boost right now, you know? I would have liked to have seen Sucker Punch onto the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> onto the spectre because then that procs our weakness policy which puts us in a uh, phenomenal spot uh, but we're just going to see the pyro ball come out it's going to be into uh, spectre but we take that pretty well um, and max quake coming out again obviously boosting that special defense which makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with uh, but we take that reasonably well reasonably well um, plus two special defense mammal Minus two defense means a grip snarl can come in and do some good damage to it. We've got the possibility to potentially get a will o wisp now the tailwind does end. My opponent's kind of almost forced to bring in the whimsicott. I think it does end this turn. I think it ends the next turn, right? Ends the next turn. So there's one more turn. No, it ends there. Okay, we were right originally. Second guessing ourselves. So the whimmy has to come in now. To get that tailwind up it gives us a bit of room to potentially get a nasty plot off we don't really worry about what the the mama swine's gonna do um <laughs> nasty plot do we let the spectre go down here or do we actually switch it out keep it for maybe late game because it could be the nihiligo like we've got to look at my opponent's team here Hmm. Could be also the Moltres. Okay, I think we'll we'll sack. Sack Spectre here. We'll go for the Will O Wisp. Cheeky Will O Wisp if we can get it. I don't think we'll be able to. I think the Tailwind. Mama will probably go for something like Ooh. What's this? What's this? What are you doing? What are you doing, Wimmy? You're not going for You're gonna steal a citrus berry. Okay. I'll take that all day because we get to burn this this mammal. That's a way better way better trade. And we don't, because the ice shot. Okay, well I mean you take our citrus berry, but it's still it gives us the nasty plot, which is what we want, you know. And a tailwind's still a bit of an issue, of course. But Grim Snarl can come in and cause all sorts of havoc 
And as long as we've got Lando, like, as well, you know, even Moltres all night legal in the back, it's not really too much of an issue, you know. I think we double in on the Mama Swine here. Or do we? Do we go... To the Wimmy? Because the Wimmy causes us a few issues with, with Moonblast. It'd be nice to kind of avoid any Moonblast damage. We just got... Yeah, I think Spirit Break. Spirit Break into two Zavims it caught. That should be enough to get rid of it. May not be though. I'm trying to remember from that, that early turn where we got the spirit break. It is locked to go in for the tailwind here. You want to set up what have you got on the back? Makes sense. Earthquake coming out. And we take this pretty well. And the Wimmy's not really going to appreciate that earthquake. We got the reflect up, yeah, and that's that the Wimmy is dropping now. Which might be what my opponent wants, you know. Hydro Pump plus two. It's gonna take it down to its sash. Yeah makes it a lot more easier to deal with of course spirit break i'll take down the wimmy and then we got either moltres i think or nilego which as long as we get rid of the mammo right as long as we get rid of the mama swine we're we're fine because landorus can easily deal with the the nilego or oh, the moltres there is a bit of an issue of course nilego could have that the power hob or the power yeah it's probably got that to be honest Ooh, that makes it a bit tricky. Because plus... Yeah. We need the light screen up. We need the light screen. Yeah, let's light screen. And go after that Nihiligo. It's like... It's not going to be sashed. It's not going to be sashed. Okay, it protects. What are they going to do? Another earthquake. Double protect. Wasting their tailwind turns. Okay. Are they protecting on our protect? Potential protect. Potentially. Let's try and get a spirit break into this Mama Swine, which we should be able to do. Like, we just need the Mama Swine to go away, and then Landorus can come in and just and just beat the Nihiligo. Meteor Beam, yeah. And we could have protected here. It's like, do you go into the Grim Snarl expecting the Rotom to protect? Pfft, who knows? Meteor Beam! Bosh into the Rotom. Take that pretty well. That, we haven't got the Citrus Berry anymore, of course, have we? Icicle Crash. Can we take it with Rotom? Are they going to the Grim Snarl? Okay, we just don't need any mishaps here. This should get the Nihiligo. Plus two. Yeah, and then the spirit break should get the Mama Swine. We could have got flinched there. We could have. Badly. Okay, well. Team works out pretty well. Uh, we didn't get the Spectre uh, weakness policy stuff procced like we wanted to. The idea behind it is to obviously have the screens up, them attack into you. Max strike into them. Max strike into the, like, the, so the Moltres. Let's just say this for instance. Okay, so the Moltres... Uh, we max, they max, we light screen, we max strike into them, reduce their speed by one. Uh, obviously, tailwind complicates this a bit. Ideally, no tailwind and and con and contention here. Next time we max strike again, and then we spirit break. That combination will get more small treasures. Um, and obviously, with the weakness policy proc from the max darkness, it just goes crazy. Anyway, we're going to jump over now and remind you of the team from today and uh, good game to our last opponent. Okay, friends, here is the team from today's episode. This is the team that I took into the regional qualifiers for Players' Cup 4 and it didn't quite work out. But I hope if you do try it out that you have a lot of fun with it. I think there's some nice elements in the team. I don't think that it's... it's it's, it's good against certain teams in the meta, but it struggles against some teams as well, which I found out, you know, playing it. So it's not the perfect team by a long shot. I thought it was a good call for what we I kind of see a lot of. I was expecting to see a lot more uh, Reggie Steele kind of stuff, more Reggie Alecki kind of teams, and I just didn't really see those teams at all. And, um, and Spectre teams as well. And didn't run into any of them. So it didn't really work out as well as what I planned, and maybe that's just... 
the look of the draw on the day as I say I'm a little bit disappointed with how it went but all I can do is just come out and say I'm disappointed with the result um, and then just pick myself up and try and improve for next time and that's the big point here you know um, I'm not hiding away behind the result it is what it is. It's very disappointing at the end of the day. I'm, I'm, I'm upset about it, but you know, I can't dwell on that. I have to just think, where did I go wrong? What didn't I do right? What could I have done better? And and what was the shout on the day you saw, uh, you know, Fevzy making a great call there with, you know, Marcus and uh, Fez uh, obviously doing really well. Those three kind of top cut and the Blastoise team doing amazing, really good shout. So still sort of things you've got to look for and, and take a look and analyze you, your own kind of view on things. I really felt like Marowak would be a good shout. Um, and I think in this team, it works pretty well. Double Ghosts, nice against body press stuff, um, which which was picking up a lot of popularity. And Rotom Wash is just a phenomenal Pokemon in general, uh, and I think is a little bit slept on. Obviously, Rillaboom gives it a lot of issues, but we got answers in the team to Rillaboom, you know? It does help uh, having a bunch of things that can deal with Rillaboom, but don't make it any easier. But that is the team, friends. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We had a few good games with the team to see how it can function. If you do try it out, as always, do let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And we'll be back soon with more Series 9 content. So until then, friends, more importantly than anything else, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.